introduce is by Chadwick Strange from Scale. And uh, Chadwick will be talking about how Ethereum native app uh, specific blockchains are made and just the internals of how Scale works. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome him on, on stage and uh, I'll let him kick us off with the presentation. Hey everyone, good to be here. Um, Chadwick Strange, VP of product at Scale. Um, let me get this going. Um, yeah, so I'm really thrilled to be here today to talk to you about building Ethereum native, uh, native app specific blockchains. Um, again, my name is Chadwick Strange, VP of product at Scale Labs. Um, and just to set up the stage of everything, I know a lot of projects and teams are being formed and uh, everyone's watching in. Um, I, as I talk and as I show slides, uh, feel free to go to our, our GitHub at github.com forward slash scale network. Uh, and then during the talk or after, you can hop onto our Discord, uh, skill.chat, that will throw you into our um, uh, core team community Discord. Without further ado, let's get started. So just as an intro, um, Scale Network, our mission um, is to empower Ethereum dApps and dApp developers to scale smart contracts in a secure, reliable, cost-effective manner. Think of this as like the Web3 cloud. Um, you can use all the uh, Ethereum tooling, uh, dev tooling that you normally use, uh, Truffle, Web3, Ethers, Rebix, um, scale networks compatible with ERC-20, ERC-721 token standards, all the Ethereum wallets work uh, out of the box. Um, so just wanted to set that as a stage. Um, and I wanna go into deeper about some unique properties of scale network. Um, scale is an ETH native multi-chain network. And I wanna break this down. Like what is ETH native? What is multi-chain? Um, to all of you, this might be new terms. This is something that uh, you know, the core team and the community has been iterating and, and developing over the many years that we've been developing the scale network. Um, so let's, let's put some context in here. So scale network, what is ETH native? ETH native is, my, my term is to, it's built with Ethereum technology. Uh, scale during its early inception, we took uh, some of Ethereum technology like the Aleph client, which is a C++ client, um, and we tweaked it, made some bells and whistles, some changes to it, uh, and it's now known as Scale D. It's sort of our, our Scale EVM Ethereum client that we use on all of our nodes. So uh, ETH Native is, is using uh, the, the compositions, the, the compositions of Ethereum technology, um, and then using part of that ecosystem. ETH Native is also transacting with Ethereum. Um, you know, this, this, this separates it from other L1s that are in completely other different ecosystems. ETH native is transacting, uh, coordinating, interacting with Ethereum, Ethereum mainnet. ETH native is also uh, having security that's based on the Ethereum network, a security model where you're using leveraging proof of work, you're using staking, you're using all the security guarantees of the Ethereum miner community at large, the Ethereum nodes, the network itself, uh, to provide security or leverage that security for additional security. Uh, and and you're, not re you're not putting that security in something else or some separate technology or some separate black box uh, where you don't know quite what's going on there. You're leveraging the security that everyone knows and loves about Ethereum. Um, and ETH Native is coordinating incentives, coordinating economic behaviors to be sure that all actors of an ecosystem are acting within the best interests of the community at large um, and, and using Ethereum technology, the network, um, any, you know, those, those technologies, leveraging them to incentivize good behavior um, and to disincentivize malicious behavior. So why does ETH native matter? Well, we can look at the contrary to this. What is non-native? What is that? I mean, this would be other layer ones that have their whole sort of walled garden ecosystem um, where, where they're not, you know, they have a whole different security mechanism, a whole different technology, and they might build some sort of bridge to Ethereum, but in that way, they're not ETH native. They have a bridge that supports that, but majority of their technology is a, 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 a so totally separate walled garden. And there might be interoperability or standard issues. A uh, different L1 or a different ecosystem that's not ETH native might have um, different uh, token standards, different cryptography standards. And so that interoperability or those standardization issues might 
uh, go into conflict with, you know, building with the Ethereum community. Um, and there might be holdup and rent seeking. Another layer one might be, might have a different community or different dynamics. Um, they might take away uh, transactions or, or scaling from, from the Ethereum at large and then put it in their network. So in that way, it's, it's they have their own walled garden um, where they're not driving back value to the Ethereum network itself. Um, and the, the other layer one, the non-native layer one might have different governance issues. They might have different incentives to change things at will. So the Ethereum community has a, you know, been developing over a very long time. So ETH native kind of is contrary to that. There's a strong community uh, sense. There's a strong governance sense. There's a strong um, you know, standardization process that, ETH, that, that supports that sort of ETH native technology and, and that support. Um, so we covered ETH native. I'm gonna jump over to what a multi-chain network is. And a multi-chain network is not a side chain. Uh, I view it as a side chain as, as a network that is existing as one chain. Uh, scale network is many, many chains. Um, blockchains on demand. So the scale network is comprised of um, over, uh, as of today, over 150 nodes. Each of those nodes are supporting uh, all the scaling infrastructure. They're supporting multiple chains uh, that can be selected at random out of the network. Um, so in that way, a scale network can be uh, hundreds of chains that are selected at random to support a particular DAP. And so as a DAP developer or any community that's using a scale chain, your scale chain, which is one out of many that the scale network supports, is it attributed to you and to your DAP and to your community. And you can set up the specifics and sort of dial that in to support your infrastructure. So your scale chain, you have a, your own endpoint, you have fast block times, high TPS, full state smart contracts, decentralized storage. You can use a uh, knee scale bridge called IMA. You can deploy your own bridge. That is yours, that, that sort of component out of the network, out of the many multi-chain um, multi chains that scale network supports. And why does multi-chain network matter? I kind of touched on this a little bit, but we'll, I'll go in down into a little bit more detail. Your chain can be DAP specific. Similar to Web 2.0, um, you need scaling infrastructure. You go to a different cloud providers, select your instance size. You'd select your elastic IPs. You select your, your scaling infrastructure, your, your S3 buckets and whatnot. You build that infrastructure, that scaling infrastructure to the product that you're building and the users who are using your product. Similar to Web3, Scale Network provides DAP specific chains that can be tailored to your or your community specific decentralized application and to the users who use that. And I'll go into more detail. Um, Multi-block or multi-chain networks also matter because of the pooled security model where all the nodes collectively have stake and you're building on that collective pooled security of stake and selecting a, a chain that can be allocated to your DAP out of the many chains that are supported by this pooled security of stake. Um, so into dialing it a little bit further, what is DAP specific? Uh, what is a DAP specific chain? So again, scale network out of 150 nodes of the network there that supports hundreds of different scale chains, independent skill chains operating and running. Um, these can be dialed in and customized for a particular DAP. For example, at the very top, um, we have one sort of proxy as a scale chain, this sort of oblong circle. Um, it could be a different size skill chain. Uh, we have three sizes, small, medium, and large. They have each size attributes to the amount of CPU, memory, and storage resources that are provided. Similar to uh, you know, a T2 medium, uh, XL large sort of AWS instance or other cloud, cloud instance. Uh, so a medium chain has uh, medium CPU, memory, storage resources. Uh, that chain can be customized to be to use and leverage the scale ETH bridge, which is called the Interchain Messaging Agent or IMA. And this scale chain might be set up that the project or whatever DAP is running on that can continue to fund and operate and sort of change that medium chain. Separately, if another project uh, might request a large scale chain, so this is the, the highest amount of CPU memory and storage layer resources that a node can be provisioned for. 
Uh, and this large scale chain might be customized to support multiple bridges. So maybe not just the scale ETH bridge that comes pre-deployed to each scale chain, but you might connect in other bridges like connects or maybe a customized bridge to provide um, whatever specifics that your DAP might need in order to talk to Ethereum or other, other networks and whatnot. And then similar to a large chain, if, if that DAP needs specific multiple, multiple bridges, maybe it wants to leverage some unique properties of file storage. So file storage is another feature that comes with each skill chain. It's a decentralized storage layer that, that uses uh, uh, the storage layer resource out of the nodes. Um, and as a DAP developer owning your large skill chain, you can then upgrade or modify those pre-deployed file storage contracts to provide additional functionality or features that you might need specifically for your DAP. And then just a, a, a third example, maybe there's another medium chain or even a small chain, uh, and maybe that project builds out a very custom bridge uh, particular for their chain, and that the entire chain, the upgrade structure, the continued funding of that chain over the months that it's in operation is community funded. So there's no central party. Uh, maybe it's a DAO that continues to agree on like, well, should we, should we again lease this medium chain with a custom bridge for the another 12 months out of the skill network? Um, do we wanna have the community to decide whether we should upgrade file storage and whatnot? So in this way, DAP specific blockchains can be customized around different central or decentralized structures around the management or maintenance of that infrastructure layer. And it can run multiple bridges or be customized according to size or different attributes to support your specific DAP. Because no DAP is, is, uh, is the same. A gaming DAP will have different requirements than a DAP that's deploying NFTs to a DAP that might be a decentralized exchange. There's different security models, there's different storage requirements, there's different throughputs. So DAP specific allows you to dial that in and have the resources, the Web3 scalable resources that you need to power your DAP in your community. Um, the pooled security through ETH native, this is the second component. Um, scale network again is over, as of today, over 150 nodes. When a DAP developer requests a scale chain, a subset of those nodes are randomly selected. Uh, using uh, using all the logic that exists in scale manager contracts on Ethereum. So we're pooled, we're leveraging the Ethereum mainnet. We have the uh, scale network has all these smart contracts that define how to create a scale chain. It defines how to select at random these nodes out of the network. Um, it, it defines how nodes can register with scale manager, the you know, requirement of stake uh, to put up, to register and interact with the scale network. So the pooled security will, will, will select those nodes at random. Those 16 nodes then basically form one of the many multi-chains that the scale network supports. And from that pooled security, you get a random node selection. You, you get the pool out of all the collective stake out of that network. Uh, that stake is supporting your scale chain uh, to run your DAP. Those nodes can be rotated uh, consistently uh, to avoid collusion over time. And you get access to consensus and full state smart contracts. Um, so wrapping it back around, we've talked about ETH native, we've talked about multi-chain networks. So how is the scale network uh, ETH native? Well, we have a couple of things I've touched on before. Um, the entirety of the scale network is operated and managed and orchestrated by um, probably the largest smart contracts ever engineered that define not DeFi, but define scalable infrastructure that exist on the Ethereum mainnet today. Scale Manager uh, has different logic layers. For example, Scale Manager defines how validators register uh, with the scale network by interaction and transacting with those contracts in Ethereum mainnet. Node creation, um, so validators can register any number of nodes and then basically stake for each node to be registered on the scale network. So all that logic is also defined in scale manager through transactions on Ethereum mainnet. All the delegation that's used to pool, uh, to delegate into validators to, to supply the amount of stake required to uh, operate a node on the network is done through scale manager and is secured and staked through scale manager contracts on Ethereum. Uh, bounties that are paid out 
uh, to the validators for their uh, for providing resources to the scale network. That's also done on Scale Manager. Distributed key generation. We use threshold. The Scale Network uses threshold cryptography um, to assert data availability and provide the security model for all the independent nodes in the network. That's all orchestrated and coordinated through uh, the distributed key generation and scale verification contracts on mainnet. And then skill chain creation, rotation, and slashing, those are also uh, defined in skill manager contracts. And so in that way, you're, uh, the, the network is leveraging and is, is fully ETH native in terms of the logic management and orchestration of the network itself. And then to provide the economic coordination mechanism, we have the, the network has the scale token um, on Ethereum. And this is a ERC 777 standard with a couple uh, modifications to provide delegation and staking functionality. Um, and that exists as a part of scale manager. And if you go to our GitHub, we have uh, scale manager contracts and the scale token code um, all available there uh, for anyone to inspect. Um, and the third component is scale node. Um, so as validators register node, they provide bare metal compute resources. Um, and part of that is a containerized system. And the basic, uh, the parent structure is a, uh, is a containerized system called scale admin, which is a Python script that contains all the logic that's used to register a node, um, used to allocate resources out of the node, CPU, memory, and storage resources for each DAP specific skill chain that's requested. And what the scale admin does this Python script is that it's calling and transacting all the time with the scale manager contracts on Ethereum mainnet. So when a node registers, scale admin runs a Python script to then tell scale manager, hey, I'm registering my, you know, this node, I have this amount of stake, and it's doing all those transactions, it's driving all those transactions back to the Ethereum mainnet. And when a DAP developer requests a skill chain, skill admin is notified if that particular node is selected to participate in a skill chain. And then skill admin responds by allocating CPU memory and storage resources to, to provide that DAP specific chain, um, all those resources and all those configurations needed to scale that DAP. So scale network is ETH native from scale manager, the, the entire logic, the orchestration logic that exists on Ethereum mainnet, the scale token itself, which provides the coordinating mechanism between DAP developers, validators and nodes and the scale node, which is a containerized resource uh, a bare metal or, or some, some machine that contains a Python script that's always actively communicating, calling and transacting with the scale manager contracts on Ethereum. Um, so how does ETH native support the scale network? Uh, so we have this notion that uh, the scale network is, is, is many nodes, uh, many chains, multi-chains and each chain can be, can be specified to run a particular DAP. And again, there's other layer ones where all of that, the entire node registration architecture of validators is a completely separate system. When you register a validator and register nodes or you do stake, none of those transactions actually exist on Ethereum. They're a totally separate network. Scale is different where scale manager, all those transactions, the validator registration, node registration, those are all transactions on Ethereum all through the scale manager system. So the entire network is orchestrated and managed through logic scale manager on Ethereum. So we have node orchestration, node rotation, ERC777 token is on Ethereum, all the staking, bounty, chain fees, inflation and slashing all exist on Ethereum. And this is really important because it's a decentralized shared value capture. Scale is mission is, is to, to uh, make sure Ethereum is successful in scaling and supporting all the amazing dApps and community that are building on top of Ethereum. And being ETH native means that, um, means not to be competitive or to take transactions away from Ethereum, but it's to make Ethereum successful and driving transactions back to Ethereum while allowing Ethereum to scale. So as scale network grows and as the number of nodes and validators continue to grow over time, as people request scale chains, these are all transactions that are driving back to the Ethereum mainnet, back to the Ethereum miners, back to Ethereum nodes. All of the scale network scaling as that grows is relying more and more on 
very key secure transactions on Ethereum. So again, we're driving transactions and value back to Ethereum as scale launches because scale manager and all the orchestration is done by leveraging all the great technology that Ethereum has to offer. And I can give you a result a summary. Scale network has been around for a while. We have, we've got some data points we'd like to share with you about this synergy and the, these results. Uh, last October, we launched what's called the Kilimanjaro mainnet. We've always been sticking to this sort of mountain theme. We began with Fuji, we moved to Kilimanjaro. Uh, so Kilimanjaro was last October. Since October, the network has been operating without pause, without any crashes for over 190 days. As of today, we have over 45 validators, some of which are shown here uh, on the right. Um, collectively, we have over 150 nodes and are continuing to grow, uh, which supports over 400 DAP-specific chains. Um, again, as a multi-chain network, we support many different sizes of chains, small, medium, and large, and all those chains can be customized to be DAP-specific to help the DAP and the community scale as best as possible. Um, and we have, the network has over 2 billion staked. Again, this is staked through scale manager contracts on Ethereum. So that stake is secured by the Ethereum network using logic from scale manager on Ethereum. Uh, and this week, we're announcing the next network phase called Denali. And this kicked off a few days ago. Um, it's a multi-day upgrade process where we've been upgrading uh, scale manager system to the newest features. Uh, to support live skill chains on mainnet. We've been iterating this over many test nets um, and had great participation and guidance from our validators to help refine uh, skill chains. And so our skill manager contracts have been updated um, and the next few days we'll be updating all the nodes on mainnet, all of our mainnet nodes to support skill chains live on mainnet. We're super excited about that. So. Um, back to ETH Global Hackathon. So uh, as, as hackers, as developers, you can request your, uh, your skill chains from the hackathon. So many of you might be wondering, well, what can you do with scale? It's awesome that you're ETH native and you're multi-chain, there's DAP specific and pooled security model. Well, what does that give me? There's a couple of buckets here. Scale can operate very fast, very fast, very fast finality having a DAP specific chain and leveraging all those resources from a node and then having that orchestration and management from scale manager on mainnet, uh, scale chains have very fast finality. And what we've seen in the past is some interesting ideas. People have, you know, with fast finality, you can really change. You have a step change function and how you can provide user experience. You can make web three apps feel more like web two apps with very fast finality. And instead of having to wait 10 minutes for a transaction confirmation or, or trying to, to mimic, you know, you know, that instant gratification of a transaction going through. Um, we've seen some uh, projects in the past build media paywalls using skill chains. So as soon as you, 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 uh, you submit your transaction, you can get access to all the rest of the media. So it feels just like a web, web two app, but using decentralization and security models of web three uh, and authentications and excuse the spelling error there. Uh, having people um, uh, uh, get access to sites and not having to wait for many block confirmations to go through. Um, no gas fees. So skill chains operate with no gas fees. There is gas on skill chains. It's used as a metering agent to prevent any rogue execution of EVM. Um, but if you deploy your dApp on a skill chain, all the transactions on a skill chain are no, no gas fees at all. And we all know how expensive NFTs are to mint on mainnet. So uh, let me just leave you with this. Like imagine what new business models you can create if NFTs, if minting NFTs are cost, cost nothing on a skill chain. I think there's some really interesting new business models that you can leverage with NFTs uh, way beyond what we've seen on Ethereum mainnet uh, and using scale technology to provide greater depth of resources from NFTs and, uh, and whatnot. DAOs, um, uh, you know, with all the big sp spikes in gas prices over the last couple months, uh, to make any vote on DAOs could easily cost a single actor maybe fifty dollars, fifty U.S. dollar equivalents or more. Uh, obviously, that tends to skew um, who is then incentivized to actually vote. If you have thousands of dollars locked up in a DAO, you'd be more attributed to vote 
uh, on a proposal than someone that might be a, a smaller token holder. Uh, so imagine what you can do now with DAOs and voting and governance uh, if you have a skill chain that operates with zero gas, gas fees. Um, and then complex EVM. Uh, we've seen a lot of interesting projects using machine learning and file storage to basically put more complex transactions than just like architecting token transfers. But now that there's zero gas fees on scale, imagine all the new business models you can do if you're not constrained as a Solidity developer to think about how do you minimize gas reduction, but now what are the new things that you can do uh, with, with not being restricted to, to minimize gas in your Solidity contracts? And the third bucket is high throughput. Um, skill chains, depending on the size, can support uh, you know, uh, hundreds of transactions per second. Um, and we've seen a lot of interest for people to do immersive gaming. Imagine hooking Unity up to your skill chain and, and adding all the movements or uh, all, you know, greater, you know, all the transactions of the game design on a skill chain itself, or even streaming, having streaming data being written right to a skill chain itself. So there's a lot of interesting business models that you can create with just these three buckets here. And there's plenty more. I mean, think of scale network, the Ethereum native and multi-chain network as an infrastructure that you can build on top of. Uh, and there's many more things just beyond these three buckets that I think you can iterate with. So I hope this is inspiring for you all. I think this is, hopefully this is generating some interesting ideas. Uh, so again, to wrap up, um, we've covered how scale network is Ethereum native, native being uh, leveraging all the great that Ethereum mainnet and, and technology provides um, and a DAP specific or multi-chain network uh, scale network is not a side chain. It's a network of many, many, many chains. And each of those chains can be customized to support a particular DAP or an infrastructure community. Uh, so thank you all. I know you've been watching lots of these videos probably today. So if you have any further questions, um, feel free to join our Discord or jump over to our GitHub if you want to inspect the scale manager contracts or see the technology of how we're leveraging Ethereum-based technology uh, and then again, you can go right to our documentation, um, scale.network forward slash docs. Um, and I think I'll stick around here. If there's uh, any questions from the community, I'll just uh, pause here as the as Kartik will, will maybe gather some questions. Thank you so much. That was a really helpful presentation on understanding how everything is set up. Um, just in the interest of time, I just have a single question for you. Um, how should app developers be thinking about liquidity fragmentation in this model? Um, if, if they are all app specific, like what are the kind of the implications or side effects or just the, the considerations you have to keep in mind um, for liquidity in the protocols? Sure, I, I, you know, it all depends on the bridge that you wish to architect with. Um, you know, the scale IMA bridge, uh, you know, you can build sort of liquidity, uh, li liquidity protocols on top of that. But again, you can leverage any other bridge that you want so you can customize how you're thinking about, you know, messaging from uh, a, a skill chain back to the main net. Again, a skill chain is, is 16 different independent nodes that are operating all independently. Um, and each of those nodes are, are looking for messages on main net. And then each of those nodes are independently sending transactions back to main net to support that bridge model. Uh, at least that's the, the scale native bridge. But again, you can use any bridge or any other sort of liquidity design um, uh, to bridge from a skill chain to Ethereum main net. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Chadwick, and uh, we'll 